Hi, I'm Dan and welcome to this week's Elements Developer Diary. Now, this week I've got a lot of stuff to cover. In fact, it's too much to put into one video, so I'm going to break it out for you. Um, I will cover some things briefly in this, just so you know what's coming up and a few things in more detail. So first of all, I want to talk about the beta. We are working on the next beta and it's coming along very well, but there were just a few things we need to get finished up before we can give it to you and put it in your hands. Now, hopefully that'll be later in the week and I'll go through everything today and you can kind of see where we're at and um, that'll help you understand more about why we've kind of had to put the beta on hold for a couple of weeks just because there were so many moving parts. Okay, so um, let's dive into the first kind of updates. We're still working on the inline text editor. Uh, that's coming along really well, but it doesn't stop at just these kind of styles, applying these styles here. We're taking it a step further, which I think I've mentioned before, where we have a new typography section in the uh, theme studio. So you can see we've updated this to font size and font family. So you set those things there. And then in typography, you can, um, you can set styles for headings, paragraphs, links, things like that. Um, so you'll be able to set all that up in there and apply it to a block of text. So that's not quite ready to show off yet. We're still working on that. Um, I will probably show that to you next week um, and that will be in a, in a future beta. But the beta we ship this week will allow you to do these kind of changes. We'll, what I have here, you'll be able to do that right now. But things with the text engine are still moving and still changing. So lots of good stuff to come there that I'm not going to go into just yet. So uh, what else? We've been working on the V2 components and they are coming along really well. Um, let me see. I've got them in here uh, along with a couple of old V1s, but the V2 components are really shaping up well and those will be in the beta we ship this week. Now there's quite a learning curve to those V2 components. They're very different from the V1 components you guys that have the beta are using now. So I'm gonna do a separate video on that so you can um, kind of, I can give you a kind of a quick start guide on how they work and why they're a bit different to V1. So I'll publish that tomorrow, hopefully. Um, so yeah, so V2 components are coming and with that, we're also doing a lot more um, a lot more of the manual and videos to help you figure out what all these settings do. We've added a little help link here to all the components. So when I click on these, um, I can just click this little help icon by the name and it will take me to that component. So heading, boom, and it will take me straight there. Now the Documentation isn't finished for these. Um, we haven't really touched these in a long time, these built-in component documentation. So this is old, um, but we have started updating all the common controls, which are part of the V2 um, experience here. This is a lot to take in. It will all make sense when you get the beta, but there's just a lot of good stuff going on. So every um, setting in the component now has these uh, these areas where we go into detail about them and there's a video that shows you how to use them. So here you can see um, like sizing and there I'm on sizing. You know, if I come down and I'm wondering, oh, how do these transitions work? I can come into the manual and uh, let's wait for that to load. I don't know why it's being load, They're slow. Got a lot of information in here about how it all works as well as a video to show you in practice how you can use it. Um, so just something to bear in mind when you get V2 or when you get the new beta with the V2 components in it, this stuff isn't written yet, but we are working on it. So, um, so yeah, so lots of, like I said, lots of things going on and this um, will hopefully explain why it's taking us a bit longer with the beta. Um, Okay, so yeah, V2 stuff coming. Um, what else? Dark mode, we've done some more work on dark mode. It's working really well uh, with this little toggle here. And you can see this now works between themes really nicely. Um, works really well, but 
We understand not everyone wants to bother about dark mode. They just want a single website that looks the same everywhere, whether you're in dark or light mode. So what we've done, we've added a uh, setting in general that allows you to switch dark mode off. And when I do this, you'll notice the little um, chooser up the top disappears. So I can toggle it on and off. And um, you know, you can choose if at a later date you decide to have dark mode, you can switch that on and then build the colors for it. So if you don't want it, just switch it off. And that's on a per project basics, on a per project basis, exactly how you'd want. Um, all right, uh, so that's dark mode, works really well. Go If you don't know about dark mode, you can go and watch one of the old videos a couple of weeks ago that we did on that, or last week maybe. <laughs> I can't even remember now. Um, just go and look on YouTube. All right, uh, what have we got next? So I wanted to give you an update on the menu and I'll spend a bit longer on this. So this is the V2 menu. And if I scroll down here, it's under navigation, it's called standard. So this is the, the um, standard navigation. And what we're doing here, we're trying to build a navigation that will work for most websites. It's I don't want to call it basic or vanilla, but it's kind of the standard works well for the name because it's a very common um, style of navigation that you'd see on a lot of websites. Um, so we really wanted to nail this and make it customizable enough and you, that you can make it unique enough, um, but it will do for a lot of websites and we wanted to really get this right. So hopefully, I think we're well on our way here. You guys will need to use it and give us feedback. But for a functional standard menu, this is kind of the way I would expect it to work. Um, so I want to show you how it works and, and kind of give you um, just an update on some of the features and some of the things we've added. Uh, I won't go into too much detail on stylizing it. Uh, but let's have a look. If I open this up in the browser, we now we've got these um, menu items and they uh, highlight when you hover over them and it also shows me what page I'm on here. Uh, let me just go to team and you can see it keeps it highlighted so I know what page I'm on, which is very nice. And this one has a drop down menu. So if I hover on this, it animates in, which is very nice. And I can roll over and pick one of these uh, pages. So that's all working really great. Um, and if let's go to mobile. And so if I squeeze this down and imagine this is on a mobile device, it goes to the hamburger menu. And then when I click on it, it slides in and out. And you can change these effects. So this is really customizable. And this is a drop zone here. And I've dropped in um, an SVG for the logo. And in here, all the links work just as you would expect. So it's really nice. Um, so that's all great. Uh, like I said, I can customize the drop down menu. Here you can see I've got it inset, but I could make it um, full. Or I can customize, you know, top, right, bottom, and left, you know, if I want it to come at the side there, etc. So you can really customize it. And I can um, change the type of animation. So we could have a zoom and let's go and view this. And now let's make that smaller. So now it covers the whole area and there's a bit of a zoom in animation. Um, so yeah, so really customizable. Uh, slide down, I think I prefer that. So yeah, great menu and there's a little drop zone here so you can put in your own stuff. So that works really well. Now, um, there is other, one other thing I wanted to cover because I know this has been reported and it ties into the menu. So doing this V2 menu, as we were polishing it, um, it brings up some of these other things that we think, oh, we really should fix those. So right now, I've um, my website looks like this and I've got this top level page here called projects. But the thing is, this projects here is, is just a heading and I don't want people to click into it. And this is really common on a lot of websites. This You often have these drop down menus, but they're not real pages. But on my site currently, that is a page and I really don't want to design this page. I don't need it to be a page. I don't want it there. Um, so that's a bit of a problem. 
So what we can do, um, I can add a folder and let's call this projects. And I will move these sub pages into the folder and we don't need this. Um, you can see I've got two projects now and we don't need this project page because I don't want to design that and I don't want people visiting it. So now the folder has become a top level item and uh, let's just refresh this so we can actually see it in practice. So now when I click on this, nothing happens because it's a top level item and I don't want it, it as a page and people don't need to go to it because it's purely there to kind of hold these items. So, and that works with, you can nest these and that works great. So now you get the flexibility of deciding whether you want it as a, um, uh, as a clickable page or, or just as a kind of a holder for the sub pages. So that's really cool. One of the other things that was brought up during um, you guys testing this, these icons, they look very nice, but they do not work. So now um, these icons work. So if I press this cloud icon, and that's, you can see this quite clearly between these two pages, that means these are not gonna be published. Um, whoops, there we are, now it's updated. That means they're not gonna be published and they obviously won't appear anywhere. So they've been removed from the menu. And when I publish my website, all these pages will be published apart from these two. So that's really good. Um, sometimes you create pages uh, like this, and this might be, a, you want this as a hidden page, but there's a bit of a problem it's appearing in my navigation and I really don't want that. So what you can do, you can click the eye and uh, let's just update this page. And now it doesn't appear in your navigation, which is super, super handy. Um, so now you, uh, I could publish this page online, but it's not linked to anywhere. So it's a hidden page. Um, uh, so lots of use cases for that. And a lot of the times you don't want those items in your menu because you want to link to them from elsewhere. Um, yeah, so that all works and that's all part of the V2 component. Let me delete that because we don't need that page. So that's pretty cool. So that you can see how we're tightening all this stuff up and this whole feedback loop is working really well um, with you guys, you know, telling us what you need because I know this was a big request from a lot of your sites and I've been saying it's coming for quite a while and, and it is. So this will all be in the next beta. All really great improvements. Um, so that's the menu stuff um, and that's V2. I won't go into any more details about this. You can have a play with it and um, I'll probably do a more of a in-depth video on, on the menu um, and more specifically the V2 component. So look out for that soon. Um, before I wrap up this video, there is one other thing I wanted to go over. Um, current projects in the finder look like this. And when you've got a whole folder full of these, it's actually quite annoying, especially when you've got um, project V1, project V2, project V4. It's at a glance, you can't tell um, what this website looks like. This could be any website uh, and that's quite annoying. So what we've done um, is we've updated it. So now your projects in the finder have these beautifully rendered uh, previews of your website. So we were looking at the architect website just now and you can see there it is. Um, it's a lovely rendered thumbnail of that website and I can tell exactly what these are by, by looking at them. I don't even need to read the name there. I can just see at a glance, ah, that's the websites. So this, um, this is really nice. And you know, if you've got a folder full of these, you can scan down them like that. Um, or maybe you view them in gallery mode, which is really nice. That gives us even bigger thumbnails and I can scroll through them. And if I select multiple ones, it stacks them up, which looks very cool, not so useful, but it does look, uh, does look really nice. Um, and the other thing that's nice, if I select a few of these and press space to do quick look, um, what will happen, uh, and I view multiple of them in the finder, it gives me an even bigger preview. So like a really crisp 
um, view there of these websites, which is great, especially if you've got a whole bunch of documents, um, versions, for example, you know, and you want to know what they are um, without having to open each file. It's it's just honestly, this is so handy. Um, so and there is there is even one more thing about this, which is really cool and a bit of a hidden um, little bit of a hidden gem. And we will be making more use of this in the future. This feature we've implemented here is kind of a stepping stone to allowing us to implement other really great UX features um, that will make using the app when you're in app even better. Um, but if I uh, let me just let me turn this into a uh, we'll go list view. So in here, if I show package contents for this website, um, this is all the document data that you don't want to mess with. But there is a snapshot folder and in the snapshot folder are snapshots of your website. Now, this is just the home page and we snap these and save these into here so that the finder um, we can supply the finder with the right images to to show those preview thumbnails for you. So this is really cool. So um, I can just open this up and this is a high res image here. And I've got a snapshot of my um, entire homepage there. Really cool, saved as a JPEG so it's compressed, um, not too large, but this is really handy, especially um, you know, if you wanted to print this out, you needed to send it to someone to give them a preview of the homepage, what you're working on, could be for a client, very useful. Um, and it's also very nice to see between the dark and light modes. As I said, this is the beginning of a feature here um, that will open up a lot of possibilities in the future. Let me just show you one last thing. Uh, we'll, we can do it on there. Oh. I want them a little bit bigger. Um, so these updates. So if I go into my website and um, let's change the color here, I'll change this to we've got some red text um, and my background. Uh, I've made that a blue. Um, and if I uh, let's uh, save this, if I save this, and then I go into the finder. You can see the icon has been updated um, there. So it's updated just like that. Really cool stuff. And let me just undo those changes because I don't actually want to make those changes. That was why I was, uh, there we are. Let me save that. Save that again. Um, there we go. And yep, and the project's back to how it was. So this is, really cool um so you can see we're working on a lot of stuff and we may with this stuff is happening at a phenomenal pace um i don't know i've not seen other software being developed like this out in the open and this quickly we really um things are really coming together now and it's really exciting so this all this stuff you've seen today will be out in the next beta the typography stuff is coming um, and I'll do a deeper dive on the V2 components in another video, hopefully tomorrow, so you can get a look of that before the beta comes out and understand how the new things work. All right, um, that's been a whirlwind of an update. Hope you like what we're doing and can see that this is all going in the right direction and we're really close to that public beta. All right, thanks for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Cheers, bye.